Commissioner of the National Arena League, Chris Siegfried. Chris, welcome. Welcome back, brother. Welcome. Good to see you. We got a live interruption right here because of the bandwidth, this and that, but we're going to be there. And of course, we're here to talk loud. So we're going to be talking loud. So it's going to be there. Chris, how you been? I'll let you use the good mic tonight. Doing good, working hard. See there, you got you got the loud mic. I'm gonna be on this one right here. Oh, good. <laughs> um, big news, big news. The uh, NAL schedule came out. Yes. I, I bet you had a lot of work uh, cutting it, it together. It was fun. A lot of changes, a lot of, lot of coming and going. But uh, no, we're happy with it. It's it's uh, obviously 2020 has been a struggle with the uh, <coughs> COVID. Okay. Uh, and everything, but uh, no, we're excited about it. We got some big plans. We just we want to have a nice, uneventful 2021 meeting. Let's get the games played. Let's get everybody in the arenas. Uh, let's not have any craziness happen. You know, now that you know, hopefully the election will be over by then, and we'll get past that part of it as well. Yeah. So uh, you know, we're just looking forward to a, a solid 2021 because our our future looks really bright with a lot of things. We're working on laying the groundwork now for years and years to come and sometimes it seems like you take a couple steps back but sometimes you have to do that to take a giant leap forward exactly i mean and, and I, I know for a fact you more than anybody else maybe not more than anybody else you want the 2021 season to kick off without a hitch and get 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 our boys on the field Absolutely, 100%. You know, there's some things that, you know, obviously certain things are out of our control, and we have some contingency plans for that, Yeah. you know, but, uh, yeah, we just want to have a great 2021 season and, and uh, roll out the things that we have for the fans, like fantasy football and live stats and, and some potential new streaming avenues for people, so... You know, we're doing some stuff behind the scenes that we just got to work through, and, and hopefully the fans will appreciate the finished product when it all comes to fruition. And, you know, for those fans in Orlando, hopefully you win more than two games. Oh, <laughs> you know, what? You, you had to say that when, when the coach is not here, right? Because, you know, well, he had, the last better. time I saw him, he could barely walk, so. He's doing really much too. better now after that. Yeah, he's doing good. My, you know, love Ben, and, uh, you know, Ben's great for the Predators. He is, you know, one of the guys that's hard to sell the Predators. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with the full offseason and, and complete control over, at least over the football team. Exactly. With, you know, it's not going to be like 2019 where, we're pulling, you know, owners are going to pull players for this and that or whatever reasons. 
uh, he's got a, he's got full control of the personnel on the football field. You know, I've seen some of the obviously I've seen everybody that he's signing, and it, it, you know, he's got. I feel like he's getting the best of the best from the 2019. There's a lot of good players on the 2019 team. You know, there was. They they dealt with so much adversity. <laughs> I mean, my hats off to all those guys that, that, that played in 2019 down here because they just you know, they were warriors. So. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. man, without a doubt, to put up with what a lot of them had to do with. I'm not going to talk it's, it's, about it. It's it, growing it, pains. Yeah. It's just a lot like, of things happen, and, and just you know, you, you learn from the mistakes and you move forward. So uh, you know, hopefully they can get some some better consistency this year, and, and uh, I know they're going to have a, a fun time. And, you know, I know what their housing looks like. I'm kind of jealous. I kind of want to sell my house and move into the player housing. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to talk to Nate and Ron about uh, housing for. For us in the office as well. <laughs> no, I'm excited for Orlando. I'm excited for the rest of the league too. I mean, we've got seven very solid franchises. You know, I don't feel like we have any weak links uh, in our in our uh, in our league. So uh, it'll be fun. Speaking of seven teams, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the thought process for Ontario? Absolutely. Yeah. Ontario is just a little bit slightly west of Columbus, Georgia. <clears throat> so, uh, no, Ontario was an interesting situation where, uh, uh, and, and a lot of fans are like, how's it going to work? How's it going to work? You know, it's too far to travel. You know, that, well, a couple things. You know, with, with, without giving all the details of, of what Ontario is going to do, it's not going to be any more expensive for the teams on the East Coast to fly to Los Angeles than it would be for Orlando to fly to Albany. Right, exactly. And, you know, if you want to figure out how we do that, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, Ontario will be supplementing some of the travel. We're not going to pay for all the travel, but if the team costs $10,000 to go to Albany and it costs twelve dollars to go to L.A., then that's okay. That's awesome. But we have a long-term vision of what we're doing with uh, Ontario and their owner, Patrick Johnson, former Oregon Duck, former NFL football player, great guy. Uh, you know, he's got a number of uh, people that, that are interested in 2022, so our goal is to build it on the West Coast as well and have a nationwide league, so, uh, and, and we're going to do that. So, let me ask More than just one team. No, yeah. Let me, um, it's just me thinking now, um, with more teams that are on the West Coast, you're thinking about maybe having like an AFL-NFL kind of split, and then... And then a championship game at the end. So yeah, I, I, you know, ideally you have enough teams you can play by conferences or by divisions, and, and you know, still play within your division or conference, you know, home and away. Uh, but we're not to that point yet. I think ten is the minimum number, but you have to have enough teams in a certain region to justify setting up a conference. I got you. You know, although you know, let's say you have two or three on the west coast and ten on the east coast, you can still break it up into conference. But, you know, at some point in time, it'd be nice to have, like, a, you know, like I said, divisions or conferences and play for, like, a, you know, East Coast versus West Coast, NFC, AFC, right, whatever right. you want to say. Yeah. yeah, I got you. We're not there yet, but eventually we'll get there. We're working on it. And you're talking about um, the cost of flying to Albany. Speaking of Albany, uh, if Predator fans haven't seen the schedule, Go to our website, OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com. The schedule is on there. Just click on schedule. You can pull it up. You can see our first game is against the Albany Empire on April 3rd, which is a Saturday night. Um, then we have a bye week, and then we play against the Jacksonville Sharks at home in the jungle on the 17th of April. So Nothing like starting out with a bang. You know, uh, you go against... The first game is against the AFL champion, and then our next game is against the NAL reigning champion. So we got we got our work cut out for us, but I tell you, I I have a list right here, and that's of only the current players that we've signed already. And like I said, I have a couple of those players are here tonight, and we'll bring them up. You've met them before, I've had them on Pred Talk before, uh, but we'll bring them up, and we'll. I like to get their opinion on some of these guys as well. It's like Junior DeVoe, he's a wide receiver. He's going to be going against, you know, in practice, some of these guys here. What do you think? Have you ever played against them before? You know, that kind of stuff. So far, the better line, you know, roster's pretty solid, so. Uh... 
And you know, the thing about Albany is, you know, they're not playing with the same team they played with no. uh, a couple years ago or whatever. But, you know, obviously, uh, Rob Keep's a, a, a veteran coach, along with Les Moss. Uh, you know, that alone brings a lot of, uh, you know, strength to their organization. But uh, at the end of the day, if you want to be the best team, you got to play everybody and beat everybody at some point in time. So uh, I'll be interested to, to see that first game. Hopefully I, hopefully I make it to it. We'll see. We'll see if we can get you a ticket. <laughs> you, you have to sit on our side, you know, with our players that way, you know. <laughs> I mean, you're but I mean, hell, the, the owners of the Predators are the owners of the Albany Empire. So it's a win-lose for, for Nate and Ron. One's going to win, one's going to lose. I mean, yeah, just the way it is. Sorry about it, Rob. <laughs> I know you're going to lose. It's going to end up in a tie. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's going to be fun, though. I think, uh, you know, I, 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 I couldn't predict who's going to win which game, but you, know, you never know. I mean, last year, going into 20, last year, going into 2019 season, there was no way I would have thought New York would have beat Jacksonville in an opening game. And when no. I, I was actually at the Predators game when I got the news that New York beat Jacksonville, and I was like, what? Yeah, exactly. It's like So what? you just never know. And uh, the, the parity, not only with the players, but with the coaches as well, has been it was a great equalizer. So, uh, and, and just like, you know, when these guys start recruiting against each other, I always tell them, you know, only 21 guys just for the game. So yeah. there's more than 21 great players out there. But the side advantage down here is one floor. And, I mean, I, I could pretty much, well, I shouldn't say this, but you, you can pretty much go just about anywhere. You're going to find some great athletes down here. Without a doubt. Uh, so we had that advantage of having year-round great weather down here. And uh, there just seems to be a, a larger concentration of game-ready players down here. Nothing against upstate New York. I grew up in the Northeast, but we can go outside and basically work out all year round down here. Down here, yeah, without a doubt. Isn't you know, I'm too old, but I Well, I don't know. Uh, Andrew Haynes says that you look like you can still play. TV. Looks to me this listen, evening. Look, yeah, I was going to say, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> I'm good for one good play. One good play. And then on the oxygen. And that's the kickoff, right? I don't think I would run down on the kickoff. No, no, you just... I'm good for, like, a down. stream. Just I'll kick it down. Kick down. Kick so, kick I appreciate it down. that, Andrew. <laughs> You're too kind. I've known Andrew for a long time. I met him back in the early 2000s, and... Uh, Good deal. It's great to lose the ball. Andrew's working in the front office here with the Predators right now. So, so yeah, you've got to stop in there. you got to stop in there. We'll have to let you know when he comes in. He's in and out, in and out all the time. You know, so he's, he's hustling. He, yeah, you got to catch him. His whole life he's been hustling, so uh, you got to catch him. And we got some good things on the horizon with Andrew as well. So we're working, he and I are working on some things. When I say he and I, he's doing all the work, and I'm basically... Getting some glory? No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. But sure. he's doing a lot of hard work that's going to really help not only the, uh, the, the Orlando Predators, but the league as well. So I'm excited about what he interjects into the National League. I, 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 I love his ideas. He's got such a lot of great ideas. And he's, he's moving forward with a lot of them right now. It's hard to keep up with him. That's a good thing. You need people like that in the team, on the teams, at the league. I mean, you just need good people that believe in the product, that are, that are willing to put in some work and, and uh, help this thing grow. Don't have to say his name, but he's he's gonna bust he's gonna bust my he's gonna bust my chops. It's all good. Yeah, and. Um, Reggie Parker, just so you know, honey, yes, we are working on a delay. We're having some internet problems, but don't worry about it. Everything's being recorded. It's going to be streamed again live. So if anybody out there has any questions, the questions are coming through. I just got from Matt Wells right there. He just he just chimed in a minute ago. So if you think we're on a delay, please still chime in. Ask the commissioner any questions. Ask me any questions if you like. Uh, I'll think about answering them. Uh, Chris can answer them if he likes. Um, let's see, what was I going to ask you? COVID. I just want your opinion on COVID because a lot of the fans are going like, what's going to happen with COVID? Uh, what is your opinion on our April startup date? Do you have an opinion that you want to share? I have a politically incorrect opinion that I probably won't share on COVID, although the flu numbers seem to be very, very, very low this year. I know. <laughs> uh, but we are, obviously, we, we can't control what cities, uh, states, and, and the government, what not, uh, what they decide for everybody, right, uh, in our free country. 
but we do have a contingency plan in the event that we have to push back the season, you know, if we have to delay the start of the season. We, we do have a backup plan. Uh, so we do have basically an alternate schedule. Uh, it is what it is, right? So hopefully we'll get to the point where the, uh, the arenas have certain protocol in place, whether it's, you know, <laughs> mask mandates. You know, or, okay, I'm not gonna go there on the mask. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, hand sanitizers and, you know, if we have to have certain, you know, percentages, I don't know. Uh, but we do have an alternate schedule that we're working on. If we have to delay the start, you know, but we feel, you know, April, May, we should be getting in clear by then, uh, in theory. You know, the, the two-week lockdown, you know, should be over by then, so. I would hope so, yes. Let's go on to something other than COVID. I know, right? It's really going to a bad place there. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how's the, uh, the uh, you're a realtor as well, right? I am. How's the real estate business doing right now? People aren't moving away from Florida. They're moving in. So, uh... No, it's it's real estate's very strong values are values are remarkably still on the rise. Right. And you know, interest rates are <laughs> historically low. So it, the real estate market's very good, you know. So uh, you know, for those people that live in other parts of the country like Michigan or wherever, come on down to Florida, you know. And, and and your website is how can they get a hold of you? So from a real estate standpoint, living in CentralFlorida.com, all spelled out. So search for your dream home. Call me, give me a hard time. Whatever you want to do, I'm available. He's he's definitely a sport. Um, you can tell because he came on the show here at the last minute today. I kind of texted him and said, Hey, Chris. I don't have anybody on the show today. I said, thanks. I'll be your nobody. I'll be your nobody. <laughs> now you sound like Ben Bennett. Uh oh, I'm the last, I'm the last resort. <laughs> come on no, now. It's always great to come down here. It just caught me. You know, my wife was out, you know, uh, working at her company, and uh, my daughter was studying for her finals. She's a freshman at Palm Beach. Go no sailfish. Uh, so it just timing-wise is really good, and it's always a pleasure to come down here whenever I can. Hey, let me ask you a question, because I heard I heard a rumor, and I just heard it just before the show, that the NFL, a team in the NFL has brought in a female kicker, because some of the players have gotten, apparently some of the kickers have gotten COVID. Is that an option for the NAL? Is there any restrictions against? The only restriction we have is you've got to be at least 18 years old. So there you go. So if a girl, I don't care if it's a girl, whatever. If she's good enough to play, and I don't care if it's just kicker. If she's good enough to play quarterback, whatever. Uh, if you're good enough, you play, period. There you go. Uh, the sex should not matter. I that, should, should say the gender should not the matter. The gender does not matter. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's great. I didn't see, I guess, it was a girl from Vanderbilt that played. And, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, she, I don't know uh, she kicked. Uh, I think she was a kicker. She's a kicker. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, if you've ever watched, like, like our women's national team, I mean, that's almost every single lady on that team could easily be a kicker at any level. Well, I shouldn't say easily be a kicker at any level. I'm not trying to downplay a kicker, especially the one you had on the other night, which I was going to give him a hard time because he cost me the game back in time. Uh, so if he's listening, I, I, he's referring, he's referring have, to Mark Lewis. I still have nightmares. Uh, but no, it, but some of these girls, like I took, I take the women's national team as an example. These girls are some of the best athletes in the world, and they have extremely strong legs. You know. Now, bottom line is, if you're good enough, it doesn't matter as long as you're at least 18 years old, and it doesn't matter. If you're good enough, line you, you know. Uh, now, is there is there an age limit? And uh, I know 18, but on, on the high end. On the high end, yeah. No, but there comes a certain age where if you're still trying, then you probably have more mental issues than you do age <laughs> issues. Uh, but no, I mean if you're whatever age. And I know, I'm, I know. I'm 51. If I, if I. <laughs> See, you're uh, still young. My you're problem, still young. My problem is if I try to play, I'd be good for two plays, but as soon as I get hit, I'd be on IR for the rest of the season just because your body doesn't respond as well. But if you watch that Tyson Coy Jones Jr. fight, <laughs> I think Tyson would still be top 10. <laughs> for I, I didn't see it, but I, I, oh my I heard. And I 54 can't believe years old, and I, I heard it was a draw. 
Yeah, it wasn't a draw. It was eight nothing Tyson. That's what I thought. I mean, then after watching them both work out, I go like, wow, Tyson still yeah. got it. But speaking of that kicker you had on a couple of weeks ago. His name is Mark Lewis. Yeah, the kicker that you had on. Yeah, the other day. Mark Lewis. So I'll set the time for everybody. I was the head coach up in Pittsburgh in 2011, and we were doing really well. Uh, we came down to the jungle. Uh, Bernard Morris was my quarterback, who later played a little bit for the Predators and the Jacksonville Sharks and whatnot. And we were up 41-21, I believe it was, or 41-20, something like that, at halftime. No problem. No right? problem. We kick off, Orlando gets the ball, he goes down and scores. Okay, no big deal. Mark Lewis, the kicker guy, uh, like I said, something. he kicks a rail ball and it's the up, it's the upright on the right side. I never forget the old, I think it was the old end. The old end. Uh, yeah, I think it was. It was at the uh, TD Water. And then Orlando recovered it for a touchdown. Okay, so now they're down one score. Uh, they kick off again. It's the same rail upright. The same guy recovered. Even though I told my return team, the double team, the one guy that was faster than everybody in the arena, <laughs> they recovered for another touchdown. So we went to halftime up 20 or 21, and I think we were up 20 because the first time my offense saw the ball, we were down one. So, uh, in the second half. In the beginning of the second <laughs> half. We, so, and we ended up losing the game. It was a great back and forth game after that. But I remember the jungle was so energized and was so loud. Halftime it was quiet. It was great. As a visiting team, it was great. And then after uh, that kicker guy, Mark Lewis, Mark Lewis did that to us. Uh, it was just rocking like the old days, right? And that energy really, I believe, is what propelled uh, the Predators to win that game. So it was, it was a great experience. Not, not as great for me at the time, but you know, that typical magic that the, uh, the Predators jungle always has. And, but no, Mark Lewis is a fantastic kicker. I always been a big fan of his. And uh, arguably the best, if not one of the best to ever play the game. So uh, Mark Lewis, hats off to you. Thank you for my one. Got one loss. I don't. I happen to. I happen to have actually um, that that game that you're talking about with the uh, three touchdowns right back to back to back. Back to back to back. But I mean, it was under a minute, wasn't it? No, absolutely. Because you, you figure the touchdown was scored in the next two plays, other than the extra points, were touchdowns. So I bet you they scored the 21 points probably in a matter of 15 seconds, seconds. of game clock. Well, I don't know. No, I, no, I think the, the play clock, the game clock runs a little bit after the kicks, after the touchdown. So yeah, probably a minute of game clock. It doesn't matter. It's under. It's under a minute. It's probably under 30 seconds. So but I see if you want to. If you want to run that for me, that would be awesome. So we're going to run that clip right now that, that Coach is, or, uh, Commissioner's talking about. Okay, well, and then 
Well, now you've been the commissioner of the league since the inaugural season, right? No, no. The original commissioner was John Gregory. I'm a longtime arena football coach, Canadian Football League coach, a uh, friend of mine, and uh, he stepped away after the first season, and then they, and they offered it to me, and I finally accepted. So. And I think you're doing a fine job. You, 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 you've got a tough job. People don't realize. Get a lot of arrows shot my way. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Now you don't hear it when I talk about you because I don't. I do it behind your back, you know. But to say, but I, I'll tell you straight to your face. So I think. I, think I try to do my best. To no, I think you're doing. I think you're. I think you're doing a good job, and I don't think. I don't think a lot of the. A lot of the fans. I know a lot of them do, but a lot of them don't really realize what's all in your job entails. No, it, it's, it, it can be pretty tedious at times, you know, just from the day-to-day, -day, you know, I process all the transactions and all the contracts, coaches, players, you know, so all the cooperation stuff is what I do as well. You know, I created the, the uh, rule book. I did have a, a good rule book to work from. I but, saw that rule book. It's like 500 pages. Yeah, so we're, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to update that stuff. And the key, I think, from a league office standpoint is trying to keep the budget low, which is one of the areas where maybe in the past or the other uh, league had a really, really expensive big office budget. So we're trying to do it kind of a grassroots effort. We want to try to keep costs low so that these teams can survive and, and hopefully one day make money, which is the goal on a team basis is make money. Sure. The league is a non-profit, but the teams are obviously for-profit, so meaning the league doesn't uh, you know, make money, so to speak. Uh, any money coming into the league is distributed to the teams. And, uh, you know, that's and, about it. But there's and, more of the job than that. But. And to do that, we need to get asses in the seats. We need season we ticket holders and people coming to see in games. Um, speaking of, as far as season tickets, you can get your season tickets for the Orlando Predators. Seven home games. First home game is going to be April 17th against the defending National Arena League champions, the Jacksonville Sharks. But you can get your season tickets for as low as $98. And that's all lower bowl. And when I say $98, that's from row eight and back in the lower bowl. So there's not a bad seat in the house. If you've never been to the Amway Center, 98 bucks to get you season tickets. It's a night out, and you know it's 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 an awesome, awesome time. And the Amway Arena is just what an unbelievable arena, state of the art, one of the best in the nation, definitely one of the best in the league. It's just such a great, great venue. They did, they did a really good job. They did, no, oh, without a doubt. I mean, even, like I say, even uh, seats in row eight and back, the ninety-eight dollar seats, which we call the cheap seats. <laughs> It's because they're so inexpensive, you know, for, for uh, a, a whole season of arena football. It's, you can't beat it. You just can't beat it. Uh, you can go to our website. You can call Mary Beth. I'm sure Mary Beth will be on here. She can chime out her, her phone number because I don't have it with me right now. But you can call me as well, 407-595-1179. Oh, I just see Allie and Lauren are in the house. Hey, welcome, guys. Are you watching on your phone as well? Is it delayed? Can you see everything good? It is delayed. It is delayed. Yeah, we're having a little bit of issues, but it will be. It's all getting taped, and it's going to be record, uh, shown later on as well. Um, but I also want to uh, throw in there. Uh, let's see. I'm going to talk about our jersey auction. But Chris, do you have anything else you want to uh, bring up to say? It's whatever Give a you shout want to out. Man, and there's so many things to talk about. So you just there, lead there, the way. There is. Uh, let's see. Darius Tilbert. What up, guys? Darius Tilbert is one of our players as well. Darius, I still have your, I don't, I still have your jersey, I believe. I don't believe you bid on it, but uh, I could be mistaken. I've done so many of them. Um, but we're doing auctioning off game worn uniforms. Now you say, oh, it's a jersey auction. You're also getting game worn pants as well. So if you want to dress up and and you know around the house, whatever. <laughs> and you, I, I'll tell you what, I've already had some Predheads bought Magic Milton. He bought, uh, uh, I forget which number he got, but he got another another uniform set. And it's like, 
He's so excited. Yeah, I mean, anything game one, whether it's a jersey or like the football, it's just it's just cool to have. It's Predator history. Um, this week we have I got it right here, but I know for a fact we got number. Da, 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 da. Here we go. I got number nine or number one, Dallas Jackson. His jersey's up for auction. Number fifty, Amari Carey is is on there. We've got uh, number eighteen, DJ Abner. I think there's already a bid on that one there. We got 98 footer, and we got number eight, John Lunsford. They're on the screen right now. You can see them across there. You can bid on these on these game worn uniforms, and minimum bid 75 bucks. I mean, $75 for a piece of, of Predator history. I'll tell you this, the pants alone, I saw a price tag on brand new one. The pants alone are 70 bucks. The jerseys yeah, got the price that. No, they're expensive as all get out. But um, there they are. There's all five jerseys right there that are online. Go to our website, OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com. You'll see it says uh, uniform, uh, game worn uniforms on auction. I'm not sure exactly how they put it on there. Listen, now, if you pick it up local, it's whatever you bid on it. But if we have to ship it, there's a $13 shipping fee, all right? Because shipping is not cheap anymore. And I've already shipped some. I shipped one to Texas. Uh, Brian Hicks, uh, yeah, uh, a friend of his in Texas bought that jersey. And somebody in New York, we shipped it up to New York. I mean, hey, it's right there. What is it there? Uh, there is Tolbert. I need black 75, please. Check for me. No, sir, you check. Go, go on to our website. I'm doing a show right now. Go to our website and check it out. But I do believe I still have, um, I think I still have a 75. I got to look. I'm not sure. I will check tomorrow, though, all right? Um, let's see here. Hey, cool. you know, I was going to mention, I think I mentioned briefly earlier, but the introduction of fantasy football this year. Please, tell us more about this. So we've hired a company that's going to uh, help us launch uh, NAL fantasy football. So a couple of goals there. One would be more fan engagement. So obviously the Predator fans follow all the Predators, right? But if they're, if they're playing fantasy football with their friends, they're going to take more of an interest in maybe some of the other teams and start following along. We, we also have a company that's going to be uh, helping us do the live stats. So in, you know, if your team's not playing or if you're at home watching online or whatever, because uh, your team's on the road, you'll be able to follow along the games, not only the action, but you'll be able to follow the stats live and the fantasy, the fantasy football live, all that stuff is going to be to, you know, for the fans for 2021. It was going to be for 2020. Obviously, we had to delay that until 2021. So, uh, but we're definitely excited about that. Probably going to be rebranding and relaunching a, a league website pretty soon. Uh, so we're, we're, we're working on that as well. But it's all going to be integrated on the league website. You'll be able to you know, sign up for fantasy football and, and, and follow, the fan, follow the players' stats live in-game as it happens. If you're sitting at home and your teams will say, well, Orlando playing in Albany, you'll be able to follow it. So, but one of the ulterior goals uh, for that is to have the fans you know, follow the other teams as well, not just the Orlando Predators for the Orlando fans, but... You can check out everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you would with with the big boys in the NFL, right? Sure. You know, you don't want you don't want to have all your all your fantasy players on one team. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> because when you have a bye week, you that's lose. true. That's you true. Lose. So we just want we want more fan engagement and more ways other than just coming to a game. Like I said, seven of those games are going to be on the road, and we still want you following. You know, not only your your players but you know, the other teams as well. You know. You know, I have aspirations of having a, a, a fan of the year as well, so uh, I got to get that approved. But imagine winning fan of the year and you get flown to the championship game, wherever that may be. It'll be the top seeded team and host it and getting honored as the fan of the year. That'll be something else right there, because that's going to be hard for you. Who's going to judge that? Who's going to, I'll just say it because I'm not going to judge it. There is like no better fans. Like there is no better fans than all I know Predator fans. I'm telling you that. You know, that's my opinion. That's I may be biased. But you also I may be biased. About, you also have to think about the competition within the Predator. I, exactly. I mean, how many Predators we got? And they are die 
parts. And it could be just one winner, right? Yep, exactly. And that's just one team. So, you know, we want the fans more engaged because if you remember back to the early days in the late 80s, you know, I first got involved in 1992 in arena football down here. And it, it, the game was built for the fans. So, you know, for, for me and for us, I think it's all about you know, how do we cater things to the fans as much as possible? So anything we can do for the fans, especially stuff that you just can't do in any other sport or any other brand of football, like you literally can high five players in between plays. So more fan engagement is what I want. And I've seen some of them high five them during the plays. I mean, you know, it may not be it may not be our player that they're high fiving, but they're they're smacking some well, I cannot. Sometimes. I obviously can't <laughs> support that, but uh, but no, you know, being at the games live, you know, it's. You know, it's like, I like NASCAR a little bit, so it's like watching on TV is one thing, but when you go live and you see the cars go by and you smell the fuel burn, and you realize how fast 200 miles an hour is when you're 10 feet away from it, I mean, that's exciting. And the same thing with the, with the, the National Rally League. The game live in person is it's unreal, and it's good on TV and YouTube when you can't watch it uh, without a doubt. in person. But there's nothing like it live between the music in between plays and all the promotions going on. And by the way, there's a football game being played too. It's a party and a football game breaks out. A absolutely. I mean, that's, so, that, I've said that for years, years. Now, IT John just said uh, for the uh, fan of the year, let the fans vote. Yeah, I definitely think the fans should have a vote in that. I think uh, one of the things we've done in the past with like player awards and coach awards and front office awards is, you know, we've had uh, coaches and owners voting on that. So we want to branch out and have media start voting on stuff. And obviously the next step would have bands uh, voting on it. So we just got to figure out logistically, you know, what's the best way to do that? You know, if you have, let's say, four pieces of the pie of the vote, the vote's four pieces, and one of them is coach, one of them's, you know, uh, front office slash owner, another's media, then one fourth of that vote should be famous. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, why not? We just got to figure out how to, how to do it logistically. Yep, exactly. So I'm and, not a huge tech and, uh, guy, but I'm sure there's yes, a Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh sorry, I'm short. That's okay. That was Joe. That was Joe, one of our servers here at Fish on Fire. I want to give a shout out real quick to Fish on Fire for being our sponsor for the Orlando Predators here for Bread Talk on um, just about every Monday night. I like to come up on here. Um, and uh, we got Morgan and Joe taking care of people on the floor. We got Heather's behind the bar and Steven running this joint right now. So take care of them because they're taking care of you. And I want to, uh, I, I guess I got to apologize to Darius Tolbert. I forgot. Darius is six foot six, 375 pounds. So Darius, I'm sorry if I sounded snippy with you. I'll look first thing about your jersey. <laughs> Notice we didn't say anything. <laughs> Andrew Haynes got a question. He says, uh, what is the goal for number of teams for next year? Uh, and also in the years to come. Is there a goal? So, so for 2022, there's no top end goal, but the minimum goal for me, and I think it's very attainable, is 12. That's, yeah, that's, I like that. Now, you still gotta, now, you still gotta go on a 14 game schedule, you gotta bump it up to six. That's, six that's strictly up to the owners, you know, arena availability and the owners, uh, you know, and like I've told people all the time, I've told the owners, you, you know, you can play 12 games, you can play 14, you can play 40. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I just soon have this sport all year round, but, you know, I would imagine 14 to 16 is kind of the sweet spot. Uh, I think I, I could see 14 for the next couple of years, just as we grow this. Right. Uh, but, games that is, uh, but as far as the number of teams, I'm very confident we'll have a minimum of 12 in 2022. We, we've got uh, a few applications that, that I'm expecting to get in from some markets that I can't mention yet because we don't want to compete in the league. So. Sure. <clears throat> I understand. 
can you give us like a vision on the map? Since you can't say where, yes. but if you're looking at a map of the United States, they're in that. They're in that. Okay. Yeah. That kind of narrows it down, anyway. So. so no, we're we we have uh, we have two East Coast teams that I'm anticipating uh, getting applications from. Uh, we've got uh, at least at least one Midwest, and I'm expecting uh, multiple. Western time. I'll just let you guess. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right. I like it. Yeah. We're good. So. I know you can't say it a lot, but you narrowed it down now, so. And, and which I kind of figured. There, there's a few that we've been talking to already uh, that, that we're trying to come in for this year, but that we weren't able to get everything together. Uh, when I say, I, should, I think I said Midwest, but I was leaving Central Time Zone. Gotcha. So that range is from all the way north, all the way down to Texas. It's a big range. It's a big range. Texas, yeah, okay. I heard something about it, maybe a, this is just strictly rumor that I heard out there. I don't know if you heard the same rumor. Uh, a team in San Antonio, but I mean, I know not for the 2021 really season. Heard anything about the team yeah, in okay. Anymore. Then, like I said, it's a rumor. Yep. A lot of rumors aren't true. They're just rumors. That's why they call it rumors. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, obviously with the addition of Ontario, now we have a focus goal. I'm not shipping from Texas, but uh, we have a focus goal surrounding him with, uh, with more uh, partners out there. Sure. I mean, it's got to be. Uh, and it's going to be expensive. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying because the, every one of their away games is flying across the country. Yes, on one hand, you could look at it that way, but on the other hand, they're flying from a major hub in Los Angeles. So, True. you know, I don't know that it's going to be any more expensive for Orlando to fly to Albany, New York, than for Orlando to fly to uh, Los Angeles. But we only have to do it once. Well, I'm just saying, you know, Ontario I'm just saying, the I know. Oh, we'll be there, we'll be there because we'll be in the playoffs, go Preds. But no, you know, obviously the goal is not to have flights every game, right? You know, you want to build up, you know, we, we need to build up in the north as well so we can help surround uh, Albany with quality franchises that, that, uh, that they can compete against. I'm all for a team out west. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm saying these things because I see, I see a lot, a lot on Facebook, and I see a lot of different things coming in to my emails and my texts about, wow, how are they going to do it? It's going to be expensive, this and that. That's not really for, for, for me to uh, worry about. They, they do it coming in. Right? So, uh, it, the, the difference, I'd like, say, in Ontario is outside of Los Angeles, right? So. Who is it expensive for, right? It's it's a little bit more expensive for them when they travel because every single game is a flight. Right. Uh, and as far as the existing NAL teams, that's one of their seven games, right? So it, it's really not a cost burden to any of the existing teams. Right. Uh, but that's why we have to do a really good job of vetting the owner of the Ontario team. And it's not going to be an issue. Uh, there you go. You heard it. It's so, not going to be an issue. And, and he understands the cost involved and in, in being on his own for the first year. But the traction that we've gathered with having him on board and some of the potential people that he knows has been tremendous. So we're really excited about the future and growing the league. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, Julio Perez. Go Perez. Absolutely. Thanks for joining in. Uh, and Andrew Haynes just threw in there, you know, with flights as cheap as they are right now, it's not much more of an expense. Yeah, true. You know, and, and also when you think about, let's, let's take a team like Columbus who flies out of uh, Atlanta. There's places that they fly even now that you think they would bust, but if they're getting tickets so inexpensive out of Atlanta, most of you know, Delta, and so it's a hub for Delta. Yeah. That sometimes it doesn't make sense for them to drive even to New Jersey or I would say Prince Park Carolina, but you know. That's pretty close. Though. That's pretty close. So outside of them, I mean, sometimes it's cheaper for them just to fly. You know? But fortunately for a team like Columbus, they're very centrally located with the existing footprint of our league, but they're not flying that much. But when they do, they're actually saving money. Versus bus and fuel. Yeah, the, the cost of the bus, the cost of the gas, the fuel, and everything like that. Yeah, I understand. Yep. So, yeah, we were talking about busing, uh, busing our players out to Ontario whenever we play the uh, the bandits out there. Yeah, and they're, they're not even listening. <laughs> that would be real. I can't imagine. Well, actually, I can't imagine. 
I was coaching in Arkansas, <laughs> and uh, we lost the last game of the year. And the difference was hosting a game versus going on the road for the playoffs. And the owner's like, if you don't win, we're busting. The problem is our first playoff game was in Boise, Idaho. Oh, jeez. And we literally spent two nights on a bus. Needless to say, we were a little sluggish that game and didn't win, but... Uh, yeah, don't, don't bust the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. I was only saying it because two of our players are here, and they didn't even hear me say it, so it's like... Well, man, you have to leave on Monday for a Friday again. <laughs> you, <ever? laughs> you, you play on Saturday, don't, don't unpack your back, you're, you know. That's tough. That's tough. Hey, I want to get some shout-outs here. Um, actually, birthdays. Uh, we got some birthdays here. We got three birthdays today. Uh, let's see here. We've got Lori Tool, longtime Predator fan. Uh, Mike Tool, they're Predheads. They've been they've been around. Her birthday is today. Happy birthday, Lori. Uh, let's see. My brother Joe and my she's my grandniece. She's my niece's daughter, so she's a grandniece, right? Sure. Let's go with that. It's her birthday, Ashley Daniels. Um, I wanna. Before next Monday, we've got five other ones. Uh, Amanda Cohen, she worked with the Preds in 2019. Her birthday's tomorrow. Heath Patterson, good friend of mine, works over at Holler Honda. Shout out to Heath. His birthday is on the third. We've got Michelle Lemons, a longtime season ticket holder, front row right there. She is always, always there. Her birthday is on the third. Uh, Penny DeJulia, she's a good friend of mine. I worked with her for years. Her birthday is on the fourth. And then we have Mr. Ron Tradico. His birthday is on the fifth. Happy birthday, Ron. Ron's going to be 21, so he'll be able to drink here legally now. Just saying. Just saying. Ron. But I also want to give a uh, congratulations to uh, Kristen Rice Lee. Our uh, Orlando Predator Prowlers did a, a raffle, a drawing. They had some sort of a contest. And Kristen Rice Lee won a pair of season tickets for the 2021 season. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. I mean, right there, I, don't, I think she's a Predator fan because some, uh, Laura Constantini was telling me that she saw her pictures of her and her kids down on the field with the players, so I'm sure she is a Predator fan. There she is. Hell yeah. <laughs> Kristen, while you're looking on there, while you're watching, are you a season ticket holder for the past, or when did you go to the games? You can chime in there. We're an open forum here. Um, while, you're, while you're doing that, there's another something else I was gonna ask you, and I can't. Don't get old. You forget stuff. You start. You start looking at stuff, and then you, you forget. Um, you gotta write it down. Yeah, you write it down, and you forget to bring the paper that you wrote it down on. So. But then again, on my defense, I wasn't sure if you were coming until I was already here setting up. So. But that's okay. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It is not your fault. Not your fault. So you started last year, Kristen started last year, and look, and you see there, it's such a great time. We've got somebody coming back as a season ticket holder after a two and 12 season. So you know it's it's great football. At the end of the day, it's still a great time. It's a great game. Out, right? We didn't get blown out every single game. We had some really, really tough games that it just turned at the end of the game. And that, so the first home game, was a barn burn that, you know, that Columbus, I think Columbus pulled out, right? No, the very first game, we won. Oh, that's right. Remember? It, it was tight. You guys won that game. And it was, a la I think, because you played Columbus last. Yeah. And that was another tight game that they ended up coming back to win, so. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. And overtime. Yeah, overtime. went into overtime. And yeah. Was... Both of them were arguably the two best home games of the year. Without a doubt. From a fan standpoint, sometimes even when you lose, it's still a great, a great time, right? But uh, You don't walk out of there with your head low. No, you know, usually you in the past, in the, in the early 90s, the Predators was kind of the kickoff to the, you know, to the weekend, right? To Without party, a doubt, right? yeah. The, it, was, it, was the, it was the party, and then and some people trickled downtown on Church Street and hung out for a little bit, and that was kind of like the come down off that the high of the game. I mean, it is so exciting. I mean, my kids both grew up on the game, so, I mean, when they think about football, all they think about is the arena brand versus the outdoor brand. It's totally different football. Totally, yeah, there's a football, but it's a totally different game. Excellent game, so. It's nonstop action. Um, Kristen, again, you know, congratulations to her family. They had the best time they even drove up to Jacksonville. 
to watch the Predators play against the Sharks. There you go. That's 15 minutes. Man, that's exactly. Now that's, that's our Memorial Coliseum, is I think what they're calling it. Now. That's they? another great venue. Not as big as Illinois. Though. No. But they pack them in up there. They do a good job. Oh, I went, to, I went to the championship game last year. With, uh, against uh, the Cobras against the Sharks. Another great I, game. I was up there. Uh, that was an amazing game. That was a great game. Uh, either team could have won. I mean, without a difference. It was, it was, yeah, it that, was. And that's all you want from a league standpoint. We just want to see great things. You know, when I was coaching, I wanted to see blowouts, right? But from a league standpoint, from a fan standpoint, there's nothing better than an exciting game, especially to come down to the last drive and the last play. And, exactly. You know, but I've seen people leave the games too early. And you, they got to get coached up because even if you're down 21 points with a couple minutes to go, you can still win that game, especially if Mark Lewis is your coach. Especially if Mark <laughs> I'm not bitter about that. You're not bitter at all. No, Mark, Mark I hope you're watching, he Mark. You know I love him as a That's player, funny. Man. <laughs> no, but hey, that, that's what, that's just something that happens. It does. It does. I it, probably it's, won it's, a number of games because of, cause of stuff, freaky things like that happening, and whether it's an onside kick or just something crazy happening. So, you never know what's going to happen. No. You never know what's going to happen in a random football. It doesn't matter. Uh, I've had people leave. I've, I've seen people leave and because we're down two touchdowns and there's you know two minutes left in the game. Two minutes is like a four. So you just and we we came back and won. I mean I, I've I've seen it and it's like where are you going? Where are you going? Don't Eric, leave. Eric Wagner had a famous last minute back in 1992 when the Preds were down I think 18 or 19 points and he was responsible for all three touchdowns in the last minute of the game. Yep, him and. Uh, What's his name? Ben? Ben, it was yeah, the quarterback. Cool. They, had a, they had a quarterback back then. What was his name? Ben Wong? Ben Ben, 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 ben Something. Ben, yeah, ben, 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 if you never got a chance to see him play, was, uh, I mean, he was something special. I just remember him just like placing the ball, almost like you ever do the egg toss and you just kind of toss it. It would just drop in your hands. He wasn't trying to overpower you uh, with his arm. He, he just threw what they call, from the receiver standpoint, he threw a catchable ball. You know, uh, and he was one of the best at it. At the, at the time, he was the best at it. So I'm excited for Ben and see what he can do and, and uh, you know, turn it around for the Predators. But he was, he was one of the great ones. If you never got a chance to see him play, you, you don't know what you're missing because he was. Uh, I mean, I got spoiled because he was the first quarterback in this game that I ever got to play with. So was, I was riding the bench, but you know, <laughs> I got to practice got with him. Got to practice with him. That's good. You know, he's, That's he's good. a great quarterback, so I'm excited for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to uh, IT. IT. I'm going to run a, another clip. Because I want to, uh, I do want to thank you for no, coming in, Chris. My pleasure. I, I really appreciate you coming up here. No, you did not. You're, you're amazing. I, I, I know I can always count on you. So next Monday. <laughs> I think I got some. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, next Monday. Next Monday, actually, I have. It's already penciled in, and I know he's not going to cancel on me. Um, and if you need a cigar, my wife's website is lowballlouis.com. We've got nine, nine, nine retail locations for that since you Lowballlouis.com. She's the rock star in the family. I just try to stick in my way. There you go. Uh, what she you think about the, uh, the little facial here? It's her idea. Yeah? It's her idea. See? So, Start a trend. She wanted to bring the focus away from the gray on my head, so I have less gray in my beard. So. That does it too. No, you can just get rid of it. No, that's good. But no, thank you for having me, and, and uh, you know, always a pleasure. And you know, if anybody ever has anything, comments for me, they can send them to you, or Absolutely. you know, message me. Uh, you know, my my emails on the on the league site. A lot of exciting things coming, so just continue to be patient, and we will try to get some good news out each week or each couple of weeks. And, so, you, know, well, you, a great you know what you just did, right? You just said, oh, they can contact me. And to, email. you just bombarded my emails. You know yeah, that, right? Yeah, contact, contact <laughs> you. Of course, you can email me. I mean, I, Absolutely, do it. Pilobianco at OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com. I prefer email him, but yeah. <laughs> That's all I want to sell. If you need tickets, call, email. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. But thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming out. Absolutely. Always my pleasure. Thank you. Get yourself a bread shot. Are you going to run a clip for me? Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. We'll be back in a second. Oh, Orlando up? Predator fans, are you ready for week four of the game worn jersey auction? This week we have number 18, DJ Abner. Number one, we have Dallas Jackson. 98, defensive lineman. Woodard, kicker, John Lunsford, right there. Played in the NFL, played for the Predators. Number 50, Amari Carey, right there. These jerseys are going on auction. Minimum bid is $75. Go to OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com. Go to our website. Scroll down. You'll see it says auctions. Click on that. Place your bid. Get yourself a piece of Orlando Predator history. Do it now. Good luck. We back on? We are back. Back, back, back. We're having some technical difficulties here, just so you know, Junior. It freezes up, but we still have uh, live questions right there. I wanna I wanna I wanna ask your just your opinion. It's always good to see you. I always like seeing you. Yeah, it's good to see you too, man. You know. Now we have a quarterback sign, Rakeem Cato. Yeah. What do you know about Rakeem? Um, I know a little bit about him because we grew up in the same area. We grew up in Miami together. Uh, great kid, great guy. He's been balling ever since I've been watching him, keeping around him and everything like that. His best friend I actually grew up with, Tommy Schumer. And so me and him grew up together, played together and stuff like that. So I've actually known a little bit about him through the years. And I think I'm excited to catch balls from him. And That's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You, you're excited about, uh, you know, being on, being on the receiving end of some of his passes? Yeah. I heard he's very elusive. He's, yes. He can move. He's quick. He's, he's a little he's, bit smaller, but... He's not going to be sitting in a pocket. Well, you nah. say a little bit smaller. What do we got here? Okay, okay, okay. I know. Six foot one eighty five. So he's six foot one eighty five. You're what? Six foot two ten. Two ten? Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. You still have your 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 uh, athletic director frame on. Yeah. Plus you're wearing a nice sweater. And we got till. Well, actually, camp start. March. March. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not concerned. <laughs> nah. I know. I know your work. Right, so. I know your. I know your work ethic. Yeah. You know. I know your work ethic. And uh, you got to meet Brandon Fuentes here for the first yeah, time great tonight. Dude. He is a great dude. He he actually is in the office, the Predator office there actually with the Magnalux. With he's working for for Ron during the off season. That's awesome. And he's starting. He's up every morning now, 5.30 in the morning, doing his workout and training. Yeah, he was telling me he was working out. I just got the benefit, you know, from the teaching. We had a whole week out, so I actually got to start back serious training last week as well. So it's been pretty good. A little sore? A little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. Hey, listen. Get the legs, right? get the legs back in there. Yeah, that's probably that and, and, and the abs. Yeah. You know. Get that right. Got to get that right. But you got to get your legs right because, you know, hey, a lot you got a lot of running, a lot of jumping. A lot of motions. Yep. A lot of uh, diving over the uh, dashboards, you know, yeah. with a game-winning touchdown. Yeah, I, Can't wait to go over it. I know, right? Yeah. Well, make sure that they toss you back. Because yeah. I know Jean Martin wants to keep him. She's one of our, she's one of our I'll long give her, I'll give her the ball, but she got to give me back. There you go. Yeah, you make sure. <laughs> She'll argue with you. Yeah. She'll argue. She's, been a, she's been a season ticket holder since, uh, I think, 92 or 93. Front row. She's always there. You can't miss her. I think I introduced you to her. I think she came to one of the bread talks. Yeah. But okay. yeah, she's fantastic. Fantastic person. Orlando fans. Orlando fans are the best. They are. But, you know, I, I, I'll argue with anybody that says that their fans are better than our Predator fans. No. No, 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 no. Predator no. fans are the best. Yeah. Hey, looking at some of these other players that we got, since we got a, we got a minute or two. Uh, where are we looking? Wide receiver. Oh, that's you. <laughs> that's you. Deshaun Howard. Do you know Deshaun Howard? 
Savon, Savon Howard. Savon Howard, I'm uh, I seen that uh, signing, but I'm looking, can't wait to meet him. 6'4", 230. Oh yeah, he's gonna be the big guy. He's gonna be the big guy. You're gonna be the man in motion, right? Yes, the motion man. You need to get those legs right. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not just running around, you're running like twice the round because, because you're gonna be moving constantly all the time. That's um, what I've been doing workouts with the kids at PE. That's are trying to keep up with me now, so I get my conditioning back in. I want Predator fans right now to, to know something. And I said at the beginning, when we first came, sure, come across right there, Steven. That's Steven right there. He's the manager of Fish on Fire. Take care of everything. All you have to do, Steven, is say, Pat, can I get on? And I'll bring you up, bud. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> no worries. I'm only playing with you. Um, <laughs> that just threw me off. That's funny. When I first came in here, well, this morning, when I, this morning, I had no guests yeah. for Pred Talk. And I thought it was just going to be me up here rambling on, looking, just, just talking about nothing. It's going to be a 20-minute show. You know, because I can talk for about 20 minutes and then I'm about done. But I reached out to, to you. I reached out to Brandon Fuentes, and I reached out to the commissioner. Yeah. And... The, you guys are the only three people that I reached out to because you responded. You responded back right right away. I'm there, and it's like that's awesome. I mean, yeah, I always got you back. You, you, know, you can't I'm ask not, for, not for far better away. people. No, you can't ask for better better people uh, in your corner. You know, than not just predator fans, but Orlando Predator players. Um, and that's Nate sending me an uh, instant message. I uh, text him back, hey Nate, I'm live on the air. <laughs> but, um, what, let's see, how was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was pretty well. Um, my parents came up to visit, spent time with my daughter and my girl, so we've been having a good time. And my girl cooked, she was upset because I didn't help. I was like, you got this, you know? She woke up at six o'clock in the morning, you know, threw it out. So we had a good time. My daughter was showing off her new skills. She took her first three steps this week. So yeah, yeah it's been pretty, it's been a pretty awesome time. The whole week. Have you done any more TikToks with her? I actually took a break from TikTok, but I just started back. Um, I was gonna say, cause I haven't over, seen something on there. Yeah, I just started wow. back over the weekend. So uh, you'll see me back on there. If, if, if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen Junior on TikTok, it's, they're awesome. He has fun with it. He has him and, 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 and his little daughter. How old is she now? She will be 10 months on the floor. And, and she's a TikTok star. Yeah. What is your TikTok handle? Uh, KD Club. KD Club. KD Club. I mean, I got it. You know, I watch your stuff. But I don't know at all. Yeah. Because my name is Keith DeVoe and her name is Cameron DeVoe. So KD Club. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to remember. Yeah. So if you get a chance and you got TikTok, which I think a lot of people do, yeah. you know, check them out. It's, yeah, I'll be I'll be back on there. So I'll be start I'm gonna start posting once or twice a day. So you'll see. Got a lot of time on your hands, huh? Well, a little bit, not too much. Nah. Right, hey, listen. Um, your school is. Uh, tell them what you do. I am the athletic director and middle school TV coach for Orange County Preparatory Academy. So, are you guys in school now, or yes. are you guys still virtual? Uh, we're doing both, virtual and on face to face. All right. Is there any word or any uh, news about when you're going to be doing away with the virtual and being in class? As of right now, they said January is when everybody's supposed to come back. Okay. So Every after the Christmas break. After the break, yeah. Okay. So for now, it's just still having to have virtual face to face. So it's been challenging, you know, having to teach both of them at the same time. So after the election and everything is all taken care of, then you'll be back in school. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. say that. I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, looking at our list right here, what I have in front of me here, just so you guys know, is I have the, our, our players that we have signed. 
is there anybody that, I'm gonna want you to look at like the DBs, that you are gonna be practicing against, you don't want to play against them, but is there anybody on there that sticks out that you're saying, thank God they're on our team now and I don't have to go against them? Uh, let's see, obviously my boy Brandon, Brandon Clinton, um, I'm glad he's on our side. Uh, and a couple of ones, you know, Antonio Penn looks like he's gonna do something serious. Who else we have? Okay, Justin Sullivan might be a little something, something. So we'll see. I'm just looking forward to it. It's gonna be some battles in practice. I can't. Oh, yeah. And, and, and what's funny is, once we secure the practice field, you, the fans, can go to any one of the practices. They're going to be open practices, I'm sure. I haven't really clarified that yet and nailed it down with, with Coach Bennett, but I'm sure it will be because, honestly, when you have fans there watching the practice, you get more out of your players because they're, they're practicing working out in front of the fans. Am I, am I wrong on saying that? No, no. We get a lot, we get a lot of uh, the practices and everything. We go at it 100%. Uh, practices sometimes be harder than the game. So just looking forward to it. The battles on camp, on um, the they, they, they make us better and we make them better. So that's how it goes. There's somebody that's not on here, but he is a personal friend of mine. Uh, Ronnie Hardison. I was just going to say, I was going to see him on here. He, he will be on. He'll, he'll be on there. Um, Ronnie Hardison. That's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, man. He's, we had some battles. We, this is our third team we've been on together, so I'm always, I always love going against so. Ronnie is um, God, never give up. He's yeah. a never give up guy. Uh, he's like, he's my, uh, he's my Pete Rose. Yeah. He's, he's Charlie Hustle. He's got some heart, man. I love it. I, I tell you, I mean, yep. Uh, that's all I love about it. All 110 percent. We're gonna give it. And and what's what I will say it now too. If I needed him, if I called him, uh, if I texted him this morning and said, Hey, Ronnie, I need you to come on. He would have been here. But I, he would have And he lives in Tampa. He would have drove all the way from Tampa, you know, because he loves the Predators that much, and he just, he's just a, a, a competitor, yeah. big time. Uh, Brian, got a question here. You said, how many teams now? We have seven teams in the NAL. We have a 14-game schedule. Go to OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com, and you can... That's our website. You can look at our our schedule. We'll have the Predators where we're uh, when we're playing, where we're playing, home, away. But if you want to go to the NAL site, the National Arena League, their website, you can. They have the whole 2021 schedule with every team, uh, who's playing, where they're playing, what time, all that good stuff. So. Brian, hopefully that answers your question. Um, is there any other questions out there? Anybody out there have any questions for myself or for Junior DeVoe? But it's like, you know, the No? Allie, do you have any questions? Really? You're so talkative all the time. She's good. Oh, she's 10 months now. She took her first three steps. So she's... She's still dunking? Oh, uh, she's pulling everything down, so yeah. So now she can walk and she can take talking to. Yeah. So that gate she was in, I have to wrap it around the TV now because she keeps pulling out the fire stick. So we, yeah, we have too many problems there. So. I love it. Yeah. She's watching right now. <laughs> so there, just so you know. She's watching me. Yeah. Lauren, Lauren. Hey, KK. <laughs> Lauren wanted to let you know she's watching she's now. Watching, yeah. I'm watching that, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I want to give a shout out to also to Psycho Fever TV for coming tonight. You guys are the bomb. Um, yeah, love y'all. We're, we're, we're freezing up here on the screen, but that has nothing to do with Psycho Fever TV, just so you guys at home know. It's just some technical difficulties with the Wi Fi's. And hey, but this show will, it's been recorded, so we will be able to put it. Uh, it's going to be live, uh, not live stream, but it's going to be reposted 
we're reposted. Everything's gonna be without hesitation, freezing up. It's gonna be there. All right. He says we're, we're posted, but look, you're still froze. Yeah, still froze. But we're good. I mean, you see, it's still flashing. Yeah, we're live. Moving. We're live. She um, good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we've been getting out there. Mary Lo Bianca, are you still watching? Or are you messing with that moose again? She's. <laughs> we have. We have. De when I say that, they're. We have put so much Christmas yard ornaments out, decorations, lights, and she found a moose that was on clearance or something and half the lights didn't work. Yeah. So she took all the lights off of this big, big moose, yeah. took it apart, wired it together, and she's stringing more lights on it. And uh, it's, oh, it's, I'll post pictures. I'll show you pictures. I should have I should have said it to you, John, of what we did in the yard. Oh, my God. It, it looks, uh, it, it, I, I fit. I fit now with, with, the, with the beard. And I have my Santa outfit, and I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're going to be working on a website, just so you guys know. And I'll, I will share it when it's all done. Since with all the COVID and this and that, you can't take your kids to the mall to talk to Santa, this and that. We're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing a website now. This is nothing to do with the predators. This is me. Predators can jump on board. I'll put a predator pin on my Santa outfit. But I'm gonna be doing a virtual talk with Santa for the kids. Um, look for the website. I'll, I'll blast it out there whenever we do it. Go ahead. Is the sale still going on for the season tickets? Absolutely. Absolutely. $98, starting at $98 for season tickets. That's seven home games at the Amway Center. Now, that's the, that's the starting. And that's row eight. Row eight is a great deal. And up. Lower bowl, all lower bowl at the Amway Center for seven home games. You get to see this man right here, Junior DeVoe out here. I mean, say hi. Who knows? If he scores a touchdown right there, and if you're right there, you may get that ball. Just don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. I know you want to keep the first one. The first one, yes. They always keep the first one. The first one's going to camera. Other than that, yeah. First one's what? The first one's going to camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then after that, we'll see you know, whoever asks me. And like my wife just said here, she's working on she's working on a new website. So we're gonna do something like that there. I mean, you know, just to to get it out there. Um, and look at me, look, I'm salute. <laughs> yeah, we we go, we freeze up, but it's okay, it's all good. Uh, but let's see here. I see John. Thank you so much, Brittany. Brittany. Brittany's my favorite. Brittany's here tonight. The Psycho Fever TV. Um, they were they were nice enough to, to come again. Now they weren't here a couple of weeks because their main focus, of course, is well, Psycho Fever TV. Through Bike Week and Biketoberfest and all that good stuff that was going on, they were busy as all get up. They were, I mean, they. John and them went to uh, Washington D.C. They were at the White House. Did a lot of different, a lot of different stuff filming and promoting out there. Uh, I'm glad you guys are back because it makes my work a little a lot easier too. <laughs> you won't be here next week. You won't be here next week. Oh, that's tough. Where are you going? Oh, it's Porsche night next Monday night. Okay. Uh, and that's what I'm going to have Les Moss. I'm going to have the assistant coach for the Albany Empire. And I, I, want, I want to say old because he's not really old. Yeah, he is. Um, but he's, he's been, his whole family has worked with the Orlando Predators at one time or another. So it's going to be a great night to... Uh, to sit here and listen to his stories. It's, I'm just going to have to introduce him and then I'm going to walk away because he's got so many great stories. It's, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, Mary Lou Bianca said, if anybody needs a Santa, here he is. Yeah, I just picked up the outfit. Yeah, I just so, got the bridge outfit. So. Oh, did you? Yeah. I'll show you. I'll Our show school's you. doing take uh, pictures with Santa or the Grinch, so I'll be dressed up as the Grinch. You're not a Grinch, though, man. I have the personality. Yeah. Oh, you have to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. As the AD? <laughs> no, I'm the, I'm the per I have the personality of the group, so. Okay. Yeah, you, you I haven't seen that side yet. So no, I haven't. Nice. And I better not. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I know the I, I know the coach really well. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> His desk is right next to mine. <laughs> I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> but hey, listen, I wanna uh, I'm gonna get my shout outs. Well, you got any shout outs right there? Shout outs. Shout out to Lloyd, shout out to Cameron, shout out to the fam, um, shout out to OCPA. Just shout out to Bread Nation. Breadhead Nation. There you shout go. Out. I'll do my shout outs real quick. I don't have my list. I normally have a list right in front of me, but I don't. I do want to give a shout out to Carla at Conway Optical. Is in the house. In the house. She is one of our sponsors this season for the 2021. So, so listen, go to ConwayOptical.com for your eyeglass wear, uh, or your needs, uh, all, your, all your eyeglass needs, put it that way. She I will need, take care of you. I need some glasses. See, there you go. I got you somebody right there. I just broke my, my glasses, so yeah. Booyah! Free repair? Oh, say less. Oh. Because I just super glued it, so. Um. Super glue doesn't work. <laughs> Super glue doesn't work. I'll but buy some new ones. I need some new ones. Carla, Carla hooked myself and my wife up with our new glasses and sunglasses. About, about, I guess I've had about three weeks now. I love it. I can see again. And, uh, I mean, the service is just unbelievable. So call Carla at Conway Optical. Uh, go to our website. Her number and everything is right there. So go on down there. I want to thank Fish on Fire. Fish on Fire. The seafood in, in Orlando. Alright. We got we got Morgan. We got Joe on the floor. We got Heather behind the bar. Hey, listen, take care of them because they are taking care of you. All right? They're out here wearing their mask so you don't have to. <laughs> While you're sitting down, boom, you're good. Um, I also want to thank, let's see, one of our new sponsors, Bubaloo's Barbecue out in Apopka. They are one of our sponsors I got with Boo McKinnon uh, just this past Saturday night. We just got to iron everything out, but they're on board. We'll be doing some, some live streaming, some live stuff out there as well. Uh, great place for barbecue. Uh, let's see who I got here. I want to thank, I want to thank, of course, Pred Nation, the Predator family. I want to thank you guys, you know, for, uh, for chiming on board here. Watching the show, supporting me, supporting the Orlando Predators. I want to thank Nate Starling, Ron Tradico, the Tradico family. Um, let's see, I know I'm missing somebody. Oh, I want to thank my wife, Mary Bianco. You can't miss that. No, I can't miss that one. Thank you so much for just letting me do what I do and, you know, live my live my dream here. Everybody that watched tonight, I want to thank you guys for, for watching, chiming in. I appreciate it. Again, I want to thank Psycho Fever TV. Um, these guys are the bomb. Go to PsychoFuberTV.com. They have lots of different videos out here that they've done. They do a lot of, a lot of live promos. If you have a bike event that you are going to be doing, contact these guys. They are the bomb. All right? So with that being said, I want to say uh, happy Monday. I'll see you next Monday. And uh, check out our auction. Go to our website, OrlandoPredatorFootball.com. Pick your favorite jersey right there, make your bid, minimum bid, $75, you can get an original, authentic, game-worn jersey. Yours, no, yours went home with you. Not the white one. I don't know where the white one Uh-huh. I don't know where it went. I don't have it. I've been looking for the white one. Uh, I, I bet Tom has it. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, listen, with that being said, uh, thank you again for tuning in, putting up with our stalling here with the video. Rewatch it. It's going to be on there with no, no, no delays. Uh, that's what I got. So peace out and go Preds. Peace, go Preds.